Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about some big time performances from the top 25 teams. Texas seems to be rolling downhill once again. We had a big time win from Army to stay undefeated over North Texas as they get ready for that huge one against Notre Dame in a couple of weeks. But let's get into a little bit of a wrap up here with all the other games we haven't had a chance to get to and still some top 25 games that I want to get to real quickly. And we'll start with that number one team in the country that continues to assert themselves as the top team in the country they're playing really really good football did not leave this one remotely up for debate uh, throughout this one was really really impressive and is as efficient as really anyone in the country and that's really the biggest thing for me at this very moment with so many different teams being up and down so many different teams playing very weird football one day and then lights out the other Oregon's just playing lights out football. Week in and week out, they're playing really, really great stuff. And obviously, bigger challenges ahead. But this was a big time win. And then Dylan Gabriel threw for three scores, got over the FBS uh, record. So congratulations to him. Took him a little bit of time, but that's beside the point. We can get into that argument a little bit later. But uh, they did get 180 uh, yards on the ground. Had a crazy fake punt when they were up 13. Just kind of what Dan Lanning does. A little bit of Dan Campbell and Dan Lanning. But at the end of the day, they handled their business at a very, very high rate. Get on with a win that they very well should have won kind of at this margin. So really impressive stuff. The defense also did work, not allowing 300 yards, only 83 yards on the ground in this one. Forced three turnovers. Maryland was 6 for 19 on third down really really good stuff and all of the places that you need to be good Michigan was in this one they got at Wisconsin at and Washington coming up they win those two they're undefeated they're the number one team in the country they're heading to the Big Ten title possibly against this team right here Ohio State was able to handle their business against Purdue 45 to zero blanked uh, Purdue and it's Purdue. I'm not necessarily going to put too much stock into this game, but it was nice to see Ohio State continue on their way, get another comfortable win here. And Will Howard, 21 for 26, 260 through the air, three scores, eight different players caught passes. You had 173 on the ground. This team is just incredible. Um, and they were incredible defensively as well, allowing just over 200 yards, forcing two turnovers. It feels like everything's coming into place. It feels like all that stuff that we talked about, how this defense, this offense, everything is so well put together. The uh, talent level is just ridiculous. They just need to get it all working in unison. Feels like it's starting to work in unison. Now, obviously, big time test coming up. Now, they do have at Northwestern before the huge one against Indiana and then Michigan at home. So plenty of work to do. And obviously, that Indiana game is massive. But as of right now, feels like everything's starting to roll downhill for Ohio State and could just be, very well be the team that ends up winning the title at the end of the day. And then we had a dominating win over Florida State because that's just what happens. Pretty much a weekly a reminder every single week to say, Florida State gets beaten by a lot of points. You'll pretty much have the gist of that game, but this one was ugly, and it led to a couple of staff changes that probably were a little bit overdue, but they get done officially at Florida State. Adam Fuller has been fired as the defensive coordinator. Alex Atkins has been fired as the offensive coordinator, and the wide receiver coach, Ron Duggins, is out uh, at Florida State. So the weirdness begins. you got to figure out how you're going to get a, a go about this. They have plenty of guys that they can go after, I'm just going to put this out there. Brennan Marion as their offensive coordinator would be a special thing to watch. But that's a totally different conversation. We will get into that in time. But overall, this is when it starts. This is when Mike Norvell's job is really on the line, where he's got to rebuild this thing. He's got to get a portal class that's going to win them games. He's got to start recruiting better at the high school level. It all starts with those staff hires that he's about to make. So a couple of really interesting months around Tallahassee coming up. But this uh, game in and of itself, let's just focus back in on the uh, present here. But Notre Dame's offense continues to roll over 200 yards through the air and on the ground. No turnovers. Their defense is their defense. They got two in uh, INTs, including a pick six that just totally buried this game and made it look really, really ugly. Uh, but Notre Dame continues to handle their business. Now they head into a stretch where... It's a little sketchy. It's not necessarily games that they should lose by any respect, but Virginia, a team that's coming off a big win over Pitt that's very dangerous. You have Army, obviously, playing really good football and can always spring an upset. And then you got at USC, not necessarily a team that's played all that great of football, but rivalry game, they've just changed quarterbacks. Maybe that the spark this offense needs, and you could be in a little bit of trouble. Obviously, all of this is conjecture, but right now, uh, Notre Dame's doing what they need to do. They're still right on thin ice, but... That thin ice feels pretty good right about now if you're Notre Dame. Then we have Boise State play 
one of the worst games they've played all year, probably. This was not a very, very clean performance, really, at all. And it was Ash and Genty that, imagine that, won the game for them. Uh, he 34 carries, 209 yards, three touchdowns in this game. He was the whole offense for Boise State, as he has been in a number of different ways, because they only passed for 119 yards. They had a pick in this game. It was very ugly, and Nevada's may have just given the blueprint to a couple more talented teams to possibly be able to stop this offense, just let Genty do his thing. I guess is probably the best way to go about it. Just say, he's going to get his, he's going to do him, we're going to do our best to stop him, but at the end of the day, he's probably going to get 150 yards, a couple of scores. We have to be able to counter on offense and then be able to fully stop this pass game is really the, uh, the key to winning uh, against Boise State. So they're still on their way to a Mountain West championship, a CFP berth. They have at San Jose State, Wyoming, and Oregon State to finish. So they should be okay. They should be firmly on their way. But at the end of the day, this is still a team that's a little bit flawed and still a team that if they got into the CFP, I wouldn't necessarily love in any of the games that they would play. But obviously, that's a conversation we can have down the road and definitely one that could change in a hurry with someone like Ash and Genty on the field. But moving forward to Washington, uh, Washington State getting able to get a very, very dominant win over Utah State this weekend and the slimmest of paths to the CFP is still alive. It, a million, I, I truly do mean, a million things would have to happen for Washington State to get in, even at 11 and one. But at the end of the day, they get one step closer to 11 and one, and possibly could just be setting themselves for huge success once they get into a real conference in a couple of years. But he went 18 for 20, uh, 24, 179 yards, four scores passing, then had 13 carries, 55 yards, and a score on the ground. The dude is just absolutely remarkable. Has been one of the best players in the country this year, and uh, Washington State overall totaled 300 yards on the ground and did not trail in this game. So it was the dominating performance that they very much needed. And they have some tough games coming up at New Mexico this upcoming weekend, which is a dangerous team just to score with. You have at Oregon State in a couple of weeks and then Wyoming. So a lot of things still on the table for this team and a lot of things that would have to happen for them to reach the ultimate goal, which is the CFP for them. Then we had this game. South Carolina was able to beat Vanderbilt in a dominating defensive performance and feels like that's kind of been a pattern for Vanderbilt as of late. I'm not saying their offense has been figured out, quote-unquote, but the run game has really struggled over the last couple of weeks. They had 28 carries for 108 eight yards in this game, and Diego Pavia was their leading rusher with 65. And the interior run game, that north-south run game that we talked about last week, was just not there. For the third weekend in a row where you had Texas, you had Auburn, now you had South Carolina, it was just a little bit too much for him. Now, the Lenora Seller show was alive and well on Saturday. He topped 350 total yards, had four scores in this one. The dude's remarkable. He feels like he's fi finding his groove, finding uh, he's grown throughout this year. He was a very young quarterback to start it. He's now a little bit more veteran, and it's really showing off. So South Carolina is a great team, and I, I think that LSU loss or LSU loss doesn't change too, too much for them, to be totally honest with you. But overall, I think there's just too much of a mess in front of them. I think they are a team that, frankly, one call goes differently in that LSU game. They are firmly in the CFP conversation. Frankly, they'd probably be in the CFP right about now. But they lost that game. And I hate to say it, but that's probably enough to keep them out of this race. There could be a world where they could beat a couple of the teams that make their way into the playoff this year. But as of right now, you can't necessarily say that with your chest. So... They're probably on the outside looking in. I hate to say it, but even if they win out, I don't necessarily love this team to get into the CFP, and I wish they could. I just don't think it's possible. But maybe maybe I'm proven wrong. I'd love to be proven wrong, frankly. But moving over to the Big 12, Arizona State's just still alive. They're still hanging out in the Big 12, and they've got two straight. Uh, they've won two straight, and this one they did it without Cam Scadaboo, which is huge. And they get Kansas State and BYU in the final three games of the season. They could blow up the Big 12. Say Colorado loses one more game. Say Kansas State beats Iowa State at the end of the year. This could be the team that goes to Arlington. I know that sounds crazy, but with the way the Big 12 has been shaking out, crazy stuff's going to happen. And uh, being able to do it without Cam Scadaboo is absolutely incredible. But Sam Levitt was great in this one. 16 for 25, 161 yards through the air, and three scores. Really, really remarkable stuff when they very, very badly needed it. So really incredible stuff from this Arizona State team. They are very, very tough. Cannot give enough props to what Kenny Dillingham has done over there in Tempe. But you got a really, really tough stretch coming up. It could be a season where you totally blow everything up and 10-2, and go to Arlington and miraculously find your way into the CFP. 
It could also be a world where you lose two out of the next three games. You walk out of here with a little bit of a disappointing eight and four season, and you're trying to regroup for 2025. So a lot still on the table for Arizona State. If they can win those next two games against BYU and against Kansas State, then watch out. This might just be the team that you see in Arlington. But obviously a lot of things need to happen to get there. But UCF, a very disappointing win. They could salvage it with two wins over uh, West Virginia and Utah to finish. But this is a missed opportunity, no doubt about that. And it'll be really interesting to watch what happens the rest of the way for not only UCF, but if Arizona State can just mess up the Big 12 just a little bit, I'm more than happy to sit here and watch it happen. But Finally, we'll go down to the group of five for a huge group of five performance from Navy this past weekend, and this was the result they badly needed. They ran for over 300 yards, forced three t- uh, turnovers on Bryce Archie, and got a very comfortable win. That was the ultimate goal here, and now they're in a place where they got a huge game against Tulane this upcoming weekend. They win, they're probably in the a, a, uh, American title. If Tulane wins, Tulane's probably in the American title, and whoever it is, they're probably playing Army uh, up there, so it'll be really awesome to watch. If we still have the chance for those back-to-back Army-Navy games, it'll be interesting to see how all, that, uh, all of that unfolds, especially if Army's undefeated. But at the end of the day, regardless of if Army loses to Notre Dame or not, you're still in a place where we're going to have a very, very fun American championship, and the more I see Boise State play, the more I think, even with a loss, maybe those teams should get in. But We'll get into that conversation a little bit down the road, but huge win from Navy keeps them right in the mix for the American and a couple of more wins away. If you beat Tulane, then you're in a great place to possibly win your conference and who knows with all the craziness going on with Boise State starting to show a little bit of a chinks in the armor, might as well open up a door for Navy to possibly get back in this thing. It sounds crazy, but who knows at the end of the day, everything has been all over the place this year, so I'm not counting anything out right about now, but Overall, remarkable weekend. It was one of those weekends where you're glued to your TV, you're enjoying every single moment, and you just cannot fathom how many different incredible moments there were throughout the day. There were a couple of upsets early with Miami going down, with Indiana fighting off Michigan. You had, you know, the incredible performance from Ole Miss, incredible performance from Alabama. We had Colorado really uh, kind of assert themselves as the favorite in the Big 12 going forward. It's insane. This season has been absolutely insane, and it pains me to believe that we're coming uh, towards an end but tomorrow we will get into all the craziness we'll try to break it down for you try to give you an idea of how the tiebreakers could work out the rest of the way I can't promise it's foolproof but I'm gonna do my very best but incredible incredible weekend we'll continue talking about it tomorrow but that'll do it for this edition of the GSMC college football podcast brought to you by the GSMC sports network your support means a lot to us so please remember to subscribe to the show leave a positive review it does make a huge difference for us also follow us on Facebook X uh, TikTok Instagram still feels weird saying X but Facebook X TikTok Instagram all of those social pages for all the content and updates you could possibly need we have great people doing great work across every single sport you could want so nba is back up and running we got you covered there we also have baseball we have uh, nfl football everything don't worry about that anything in the world of sports gsmc has you covered but thank you once again for listening and i will see you guys tomorrow